All right, well, for more on the latest market moves, let's welcome in now Amanda Agati, PNC Asset Management Group Chief Investment Officer. Amanda, it's good to see you. So we were just talking about this economic uh, data, Amanda. We're trying to make sense of it, different puts and takes. I'm interested to get your take on that economic data. What, what do you think the Fed makes of it as well? Well, it's great to be with you both. Thanks so much for having me. I mean, I would just simply say it's late innings of the cycle and data naturally comes in very mixed. And so we are getting mixed signals and it is certainly making the call on soft landing, you know, mild recession, whatever the case might be, just harder. And I think it just makes the Fed's job harder. We're still very much in a soft landing camp. The sky is not falling based on the trends and the data that we're seeing, but a few kind of blips and a few outliers, but nothing that we're looking at suggests that the Fed needs to go 50 basis points. We think 25 is the right kind of first move with the caveat that we'll see what happens with the jobs report tomorrow. If that's a train wreck for some reason, we might revisit that. But but all, all told, it feels like 25 is the right next step for the Fed to take action. Hey, Amanda, it's Julie. It's good to see you. So I guess what would qualify as a train wreck? <laughs> what, what's, you know, what, what is that number? 114 um, for the last report was seen as a disaster. That combined, of course, with the other factors. We've talked a lot about the end, et cetera. But what would be that number? What's the threshold for you? I don't know if I can give you a specific number or threshold. I think this is really very much an expectations game. And so to the extent that, you know, the report comes in materially different from what expectations have been sort of reset to consensus, um, you know, I think that could catalyze a different kind of market reaction. But I don't know that it's enough. Just one data point is never enough to make a trend. And I don't think one data point is enough to force the Fed's hand. They are are clearly very much focused on jobs more so than inflation. So it is an important data point, but it is still just one data point. And Amanda, you know, we can talk about the economic data points. So I just want to get your take on earnings, corporate profit growth, Amanda. What do you expect in the quarters ahead? So I would love to say that it's rosy and optimistic because we're just exiting the earnings recession coming out of Q2 earnings season. In Amanda math, that means positive earnings growth with or without the Magnificent Seven. And so it had been the first quarter in like the last six or seven where we were still very much under the gun from an earnings recession perspective. Q3 is not looking so great. We've had some pretty significant negative revisions already. And you know, expectations for Q3 are kind of grinding to 2% or even zero. That's, I don't mean to be overly bearish, but it's not particularly exciting given that equities are still very much priced to perfection. So it's definitely, we always say this, but I think Q3 earnings season is definitely going to be pivotal in terms of what the market rally looks like from here. So Amanda, you don't sound super bullish here. So what, what do you do with stocks? Well, we're not sitting on the sidelines. So that's why I said I don't want to sound overly bearish. I just I'm trying to be pretty realistic about late innings, slow growth environment, slowing earnings growth backdrop, a big election looming, you know, potential some for some major policy changes. This market is priced to perfection. And so there are pockets of opportunity we're very much leaning into quality on both the equity and fixed income side of the equation. Not everything has rallied to the extent that the Magnificent Seven have. So there are pockets of opportunity. I, it's not a market where you want to sit on the sidelines with a ton of cash here. But it is hard to make really big tactical moves ahead of some of the key uh, news items that I think are coming over the next few months. So don't sit on the sidelines, Amanda, but if you're in the market, um, you do what? It sounds like you're saying broad strokes, U.S., large, value. We, that's, that's basically right. It's U.S. over international for the challenges that we have here at home. It, we continue to be by far the best house on the global block. So we definitely have a U.S. kind of home country bias, um, larger over smaller. I still think there's a lot of opportunity in small and mid, but it's early. 
Um, and we haven't seen revisions there from an earnings backdrop turn a corner yet. So I think that's a tough one to get really uh, engaged on at the moment, but it's coming. That opportunity is coming. Um, on the fixed income side, very much investment grade, high grade, not leaning very far into below investment grade. Investors just aren't getting paid to take on, take on that kind of risk at these uh, spread levels. But again, with the Fed starting to take action in the shape of the yield curve, perhaps finally starting to normalize, that may create some more opportunities for investors as well. Amanda, um, we've got uh, the first presidential debate coming up next week. Um, we haven't been talking as much about the election and its effect on stocks lately, but uh, what are you going to be listening for? And do you think there's any potential market uh, impact? I'm not going to be listening for much of anything at all. <laughs> I, I know that sounds like awful. It's not that I don't care at all, but I'm not convinced that one debate means anything at all from a market perspective. This market really is craving some clarity. And so you've definitely seen some movement in terms of whether Trump might be in the lead or uh, Kamala and team might, might be taking the lead. So there's definitely some movement happening, but it's not clear in terms of what the path forward holds. And at the end of the day, the market cares much more about the makeup of control than it does who is sitting in the White House. And so we continue to believe that it's going to be a very divided control, kind of gridlocked Washington. And so that, I think, is much more important for the path forward for markets. Copy that. Thanks, Amanda. Appreciate it. Thank you.